Hi everyone, Amy here. This month, July, we introduced a new Patreon tier. It's called Murder Club and it's only $5 a month. And if you sign up for that tier, you get all of our other content ad free, but you also get a bonus episode every week that is either true crime or murder show or lockup related. So for the month of July, we actually gave you two bonus episodes a week. So we did some specials, we did some one-offs, we're doing shows like Worst Roommate Ever, and now Amanda and I are doing Gypsy Rose, Life After Lockup. I mean, where have I been? How have I not been immersed in the world of Gypsy Rose until now? I knew nothing about this case. Like, I kind of knew it existed, but I did not know. So if you want to hear Amanda and I cover the Gypsy Rose documentary, which is Mommy Dead and Dearest, and then all the other episodes of Gypsy, Road Li- Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup, please sign up at patreon.com slash little miss recap. You can also subscribe on Apple subscriptions, but you'll be at the $8 tier, which that's fine too, because at the $8 tier, you get the culty stuff, including sister wives. So I hope you'll help support the show. And I hope you enjoy this episode. This is Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup, season one. Please, God, give me 15 seasons of this. Episode four. Please enjoy. And I hope to see you at Murder Club. Amanda, Amy, I, I don't know what to do with my love of Rod Blanchard. Oh, <laughs> it's out of hand. <laughs> it's Ooh. he really is like your target market. Oh my god, he kind of looks like Timmy a little bit. I can see it. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, not really, but sort of. <laughs> I mean, they're both two tall, uh, skinny white men of a certain age. I need the accent, though. The accent is what's doing it, I think. I have such a love-hate relationship with that accent, but I like it on him. It's very it's very molasses out of his throat. Yes, and it feels, and I again, guys, this is why I'm in therapy. This is why I'm married to Timmy, who has marked me safe. Yes. Uh, it's very, it just smells of toxic masculinity, and that's why I love it, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't repelled think- as I am by toxic masculinity. I'm also drawn to it. Right. See, I'm a child of the 80s. <laughs> see Charles Ingalls. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, I don't think he's toxic. Ma- I think he has that appearance. Right. Of toxic I don't think he not. is, though. That's the thing. Yes. So he has the edge of it, which is alluring. Yes. But the inside is soft and gooey. Yes. 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 And I, yeah, I do. I just, I'm watching it and I'm like, holy moly. Could this get <laughs> any more? <laughs> like, oh, goodness. Also, I could not stop myself, and I watched the entire rest of the season of this show. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm all so, caught up to this point. Yeah, so. so now I'm all caught up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched it yesterday. Don't tell Todd. Oh, yes. I can't. It's so good. It's do not so sleep good. on this, guys. If you're not watching it, do not sleep on it. Can we Can we talk about, can we just have, like, not an episode-specific conversation, but a quick conversation about how do we feel about Gypsy Rose as a whole? Oh, yeah, I'm up for this. Okay. Okay, here's the thing with Gypsy Rose. People are like, she's acting a fool. She's acting. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. 100%. If she were any other person, she would be ridiculous and we would probably have to forget about her by now. She's making terrible life decisions after terrible life decisions. Of course she she is. But she is not any other person. No. She does not understand social cues and social norms. No. She does not understand any of this she was essentially raised in a kidnapping situation in a bunker yes yes with the only access to the world was through her mother's eyes yes either through her mother's eyes of places her mother put her or just what her mother told her about the world she was including that her father hated her she was taught to manipulate yep she was taught to grift she was taught to find any opportunity to get people to give you money Mm mm-hmm And I'm sorry, I don't feel like this girl's a whole lot older than like a 13 or 14 year old girl. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, she knew she wasn't sick. No, no eight year old or seven year old when this started is able to discern that. And it started way younger than that. Yes. If she quote when she was an infant, if she quote unquote knew she was sick, that wasn't until she was like much older and trapped. And, And you have to understand that her core belief system 
like the core of her Mm -hmm. is rotten. Yeah. Because it was never fostered and loved and nurtured. It's rotten. So she's operating in the world from an unstable base that is poisoned. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to make good decisions ever, probably. No. And, And like, here's the thing. Every parent screws stuff up, right? Like we just, of course, know. every parent screws yes. stuff up. You and I were raised by people who loved us and cared for us and every day wanted the best for us. Yes. Whether your actions supported the best for us or not is a different thing. But mm-hmm. their intention, our parents' intention were 100% good. Yes. And our parents taught us to be good people in the world. Taught us to be good people in the world, what's right and wrong. Mm-hmm to live in the world, how to trust people, how to not trust people, all of that, how to navigate every part of the world. Yes. She had none of that. And she had a mother who not only didn't want the best for her, but was actively hurting her for her own personal gain. Mm -hmm. Like this kid has like next to zero, zero chance. Yeah. Of turning this around. And I, I, people are trashing her right and left and I get it. It's gross. I see it. I just can't not have empathy for her. I can't. I will defend her with my last dying breath. Yeah. I I think she's doing the best she can. I do too. I do too. Again, I I think this whole social media shit is ridiculous, but she doesn't know better. No. And this is the job that she has. Like he talks, Ken talk, Ryan talks about this in one of yeah. the episodes. Like this is your job. She's not going to go work at walmart no she's not getting a business lady job in a business lady office Mm -mm. also remember she doesn't have anything higher than a second grade education right formal education right like what do people expect of her to walk around the world like you and me i think so i think people think that she should understand first of all how society works which she doesn't nope and also the implications of social media and she doesn't yep because she doesn't have that that critical thinking piece. Nope. You know what I mean? It's, I don't understand why people are so hard on her. I don't I, either. I, I'm going to defend her till the day I die. I am too. I am mm-hmm. too. And I, I just been reading so many people trashing on her and look, I, what do we do as a society? We watch these people make a fool of themselves and we trash them. I'm not saying it's good, bad or indifferent. Hell, we have all podcasts where we make fun of people's poor behavior on a TV show. Yes. And we love it. And we love it. I, I can't, I I can't give her shit. I, I can't. I agree. I agree. I really can't. And I think I think to hold her to uh to hold her accountable in the way you and I would be held accountable is completely unfair. Had she left prison, mm-hmm. moved in with Hottie McHot Hot and Christy, Christy. Yeah. For a year and just mm-hmm. been a kid, been an yeah. adolescent, been a teenager, and had been nurtured. Mm -hmm. And started to understand what it was like to live in the world. She may have made better decisions. She didn't do that. Nope. She got married. And I think Rod, and he even said it in the most recent episode, which I know is not one we're recapping. We'll talk about it when we get there. But he said, like, this thing with Ryan had a 50-50 shot. And his job is just to be there to support her Mm. and help guide her when she lets him. Mm -hmm. And be there for, be the safety net for her. And he will be. He will be. And Rod's a good dude. I think Rod's a good dude. He's not Rooster. I'm deep roostering him. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. How are you feeling about Christy? <laughs> now, are you feeling that way about Christy? Well, would she like and Rod get no. She and Rod get in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Team Rod all the way. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Does it matter what Rod says for you to be Team Rod? <laughs> no. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. All good. <laughs> I'm like, should I put him on my board? And I'm like, I can't. I gotta stop. I can't put everybody the board on the board. Is full. Yeah, I think yeah. chicken nug, chicken nugget, Jesus, thick and nugget <laughs> was the crowning achievement. Though there is still no Timmy on your board. I know. I have to. I, there's a there's a very specific picture of Timmy I want to put on my okay. board that okay. I have to find. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Let's talk. Okay, we're talking Gypsy Rose, season one, episodes four and five. I don't have the titles hold on hold on i'm here Mm. i'm here for you Mm. guys (laughs) next week we'll be doing five and or six and seven and then we should be almost caught up episode guide okay so four and five is what we're doing yeah four is ghosts of the past five is Mm. you told the world okay that makes sense yep all right 
Okay, episode four opens with Gypsy in the middle of the night. She's been having nightmares, and they're always about her mom, sure. and they're always about the house that she lived in. And she says she doesn't even know what the road to self-forgiveness looks like. Like, that's another thing that we seem to gloss over. She she ordered the killing of her mother. And has to recon- and has to re- has to reconcile that in her brain. And yeah. and you can see how she talks about it. it changes over time as she's working through yeah. what happened, what that means. Mm-hmm. How she does or doesn't feel about Nicholas Godijan, which doesn't seem she feels particularly good about him. Yeah. Which he, she shouldn't because he's a crazy a motherfucker. A mm-hmm. vampire. <laughs> <laughs> but so, much, I, I posted him back to our friends, um, much like the people in the Haunting of Hill House, she is haunted by her home. That's a good show. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm real upset Todd's out of town because I mm-hmm. really want to continue watching this. It's really good. I won't do it without him because it's too scary to do. Home oh yeah, alone. no, 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 no. I no. can't do it. I can't do it home alone. <laughs> no, 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 no. Leo can can only help so much. <laughs> <laughs> so Gypsy Rose and Ryan are spending the weekend at the Blanchards, Whew. and cut uh, off Louisiana. Christy loves her some farmhouse decor from Home Goods and some word art. Christy, I think, is one of those people who cannot pass the display of word art at the Home Goods. She has to bring some home. I'm even going to say that this is not home goods. I'm going to say this is Hobby Lobby. Oh, probably. Mm -hmm. Home goods, I think, is a tick up. Yeah. From this. Yeah. 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 Home goods, how dare you, is where I buy my farmhouse decor. (laughs) So I I You actually live in the, you live in a place where farmhouse (laughs) decor makes sense. She lives in the bayou. Yeah. Shouldn't it be fishing decor versus farmhouse? I feel like I need to get down there. Let's go. I need to get on down there, figure out what's going out and cut off. Maybe- Maybe visit Rod. Maybe. And the cousin with the tattoo. Or- <laughs> and, and Go get Bobby. tattoos from that guy. Mm-hmm. Get tattooed mm-hmm. by Bobby. Yep. Yeah, let's do I that. think we need to do this. So uh, Mia has a pic. Okay, let's talk about this picture. Mia has a picture next to her little vanity mm-hmm. of Jimmy Rose at about 10 years old, maybe 12, in her wheelchair, sick. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, quote, sick. Supposedly sick. Yeah. Holding Mia as a baby. Hmm. Rod is next to them. Yes. Rod looks like a young Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, 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 okay. And he has a black eye. Amanda, why does he have a black eye? I need to know why he has a black <laughs> eye. <laughs> I'm going to guess back in the day, Rod got mm. himself into quite a few bar fights. Yeah. Yeah. Which just made him hotter for you. Yeah. I need to, I need to go away <laughs> for a few minutes. <laughs> okay. You don't excuse yourself to an interior room. I'm telling you, he looks like Kiefer Sutherland in that picture. Okay. Okay. I'll buy it. All right. So they're talking to Gypsy and they're they're going to take her to her grandmother's grave. So Gypsy's telling us she hasn't been to her grandmother's grave since she was like 10. Mm-hmm. And they stop at a park that Gypsy says was her favorite. And of course, we have Ryan talking to her like she's a child. Was this him. your favorite park as a kid? Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Ugh. I can't wait till this guy goes away. I have so many thoughts on him when we get into episode six and seven. Yeah. Yeah. It's gross. So uh, they stop to take pictures and Ryan needs reassurance <laughs> that he is in their family. And then I wrote, is he smoking? He I, smokes. Does he? He smokes Marlboro Reds. He smokes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not throwing shade. You know no. Timmy smokes. I know. So I get it. But I'm just surprised. I'm surprised to too that see Ryan somebody smokes. smoking on television. If Rod smoked, would it make him hotter? Uh, might. Okay. <laughs> might. Check it. <laughs> Check it. Ryan smoking. No. I mean, he's not hot to begin with, and it makes him less attractive. <laughs> Perhaps. Rod I, smoking. You know who would agree with me 100% on this? Poodle. Mm. Poodle mm. would be 100% into Rod Blanchard. I guarantee it. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Next time we, we're, if we're talking to him, we need to to run this past him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So Gypsy Rose tells the camera, my childhood was complicated, but it didn't feel, <laughs> think? Compl- but it didn't feel complicated. It was all she knew. Because again, it was her normal. It yeah. was what she knew. It's, She's- say, it's, it's not dissimilar for like. You know, people ask me all the time, how does it feel to have your parents having dated your whole life? That's all I knew. Right. My parents right. is a couple I didn't know. So, you know, you're comfortable with what you know. 
Right. It would be like somebody saying to me, how does it feel to know you have a broken picker and trash taste in men? And I'd be like, it's all I know. It's all I know. I don't know how to do any better. (laughs) I got lucky in spite of myself, not because of myself with Timmy. That's it. It really is in spite of yourself, Amy, not because of yourself. It really is. Yeah. It really is. So Gypsy says, she makes a good point and it made me think about something because she says, I felt like there were a lot of people around me who loved me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the this is the dopamine hit from her. Sure. When you're when you're sad or in crisis or in pain, that's when you get the love. Right. And you go out into the world and you tell people your sob story and then they give you things which makes your life easier mm-hmm. and you get the dopamine hit. And by the way, remember she started equating what love looked like with some woman who was horrifically abusing her. Yeah. Yeah. And it There's, felt like love because she was sick and her mother was caring for there her. There is not a chance in the world this kid can make good decisions. No. No. And when I say and kid, ex- I, I'm aware she's 32. Yeah. But to expect anything more from her, I think, is really cruel to her. Right. And it's then one she, more form of abuse. And she left that environment and went to jail. Right. Which we've watched Love After Lockup. We know it's not good. So uh, on the way to the grave, Rod shows them a house that he and Dee Dee lived in when they reconciled for a brief period. But he says, I was trawling. Mm. So I wasn't around much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know, that's not you know what that is, right? Yeah, it's like a fishing thing. Yes. OK. Right? Just okay. making sure you he wasn't like trolling for girls. or No, something, it was you still hot. Though. <laughs> accidentally run into him and been his new girl. OK, just checking. So he says that's when you Rod says when we were living here is when you got the sleep apnea machine. Mm. And th- they have this little conversation about how young she was when they started putting a sleep apnea machine on her. So here God. we go. Jesus. Gypsy okay. sees. God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What? Baby. Like it just. I, I just am sad for her. I know. They it's pull awful. up to the grave and Rod says, Gypsy, you go do your thing. Like he knows when to give her space. Mm-hmm. Well, Ryan's not going to let her go by herself. No, of course not. No. I think Rod is very respectful of her figuring out her autonomy in the world mm-hmm. and figuring out what's important to her. And let's just say when she's saying visiting her grandmother, this is Dee Dee's mother, not yes. Rod's mother. Dee Dee's mother that there have been implications that Dee Dee has murdered by neglect, like neglectful murdering. Yeah. So, neglectful murder. You know what we need to do when we're done with this? What? More more bonus content on, on Patreon. Sure. What, what are we covering do, next? We need to do the one you saw, the prison. Oh, yeah, yeah. We do the prison. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I am so into this. I need to just stay in just like Rose six years of catching up to do. That's why we're 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 raw dog in this, and right? And then left. I need eyes at all times on Rod Blanchard. So Gypsy Rose says when she was seven, her grandmother passed, and that's when her mother really spiraled. And again, remember that we talked about mom was possibly grandma's caretaker. Mm -hmm. So this would make sense that the focus would then shift on to Gypsy. Correct. Because mom always needs to be, quote unquote, taking care of someone, a.k.a. really hurting someone. Right. Exactly. So she gets the attention and all the kudos and all the head pats for, aren't you a great daughter? Aren't you a great mother? For taking care of these sick people. Yeah. So mom wanted to be buried next to Grandma Emma, but Gypsy Rose said, you know, I really had no control over that. (laughs) I was in jail for murdering you. (laughs) So they're in cutoff Louisiana now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I guess Gypsy couldn't like do her funeral planning, could she? No, no, no. no. Can the person, this is a very good legal question. I'll have to, we'll have to defer to Shubnam. Okay. If you murder someone, you're convicted of their murder, and you're also their only living person, person, do you get to arrange their funeral? Right. Right. Or let's say, let's say you like tried to murder somebody and they didn't die, but now they're on life support and it becomes a pull in the plug situation. Like there's no hope, right? We're not getting any better. Right. Can you make the decision to pull the plug if you're the one that put them there? (laughs) Oh, that's a really good question. Shubnam, does the, help hospital, us. does the hospital help you mur- then carry out the murder? <laughs> help you finish off the job. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I know. Okay. So they're going to Cousin Bobby's tattoo shop. Now, Cousin Bobby. Who although, we will meet in the prison confessions thing. Although not exactly my type. Hmm. He's had a little bit of a glow up and he is now a holdy. He is a holdy. He's yeah, a good looking man. Yep. Because when we first saw him in Mommy Dead and Dearest, it was seven years ago. Mm-hmm. So you figure if he was like 32, 33, he is now, now 40. officially crossed the holdy line at 40. Yes. 
And he so, does not appear to have any tattoos on his face. I mean, there's very little part of his body that is not tattooed. Well, he did in, in Mommy Dead and Dearest. Right, the, but it doesn't appear now. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't know. Mm. So he says the last time he saw Gypsy Rose, she was four. And he said he always kind of knew her as a sickly kid. Sure. And he talks about Dee Dee and he said he believes she was bipolar. And he tells this story about her holding an orange and talking to it like it was a baby and nurturing it. And then she goes, all of my cement and like squashes it and walks away. <laughs> this woman was so fucked up. Bobby says this was weird even to me at that age. Yeah. Like I knew it was weird. Hey everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. Gypsy Rose said, you know, I maybe I should have told someone when mom said that she started hearing voices, but I was so young and I didn't really understand. You tell Bobby a six-year-old that mommy's hearing voice. Like, you don't know what that means. I know. Now and by the way, this- you probably have an imaginary friend that you hear the voices of too. A hundred percent. Now, yeah. what did you make of this part? Okay, because okay. he says, Christy came in for a tattoo and she was telling me how well you were doing at the Special Olympics. And we were saying, I think he says we were saying, mm, yeah. um, that you could walk. So, of course, you were doing well at the Special Olympics. And then he says something like, I am i don't know why she didn't tell anybody. Yeah. So many people have failed you. That's what he says to her. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. interesting to me. because and But it was a little ambiguous the way he told the story. Like, I couldn't tell if... If she was Christy or that she was Dee Dee. Right. Or if Christy knew that Gypsy Rose could walk. Like, right. I, it was unclear. Yeah. It, it's real unclear because, well... Between a lot of the use of she, and we're talking about three different women in a conversation that she could have been everybody, anybody. Yeah, yeah. And some of the grammar stuff makes it challenging to figure out, like, what do you think you're saying? Right. Yeah. So I thought, I came away from it thinking that he implied that Christy knew this was a grift. Mm. But, I mean, we have no other reason to think that. Christy doesn't seem to... Mm-mm. I don't no. know. So... He, she asks, would my aunts, my aunts, my aunts, I say aunts, it's I say my aunts Scranton, too. Pennsylvania thing. Yeah. Uh, would they be willing to talk with me? And he's like, mm, you murdered their sister. Sister, yeah. Mm, not going to happen. Yeah. And they hug. You might be persona non grata in that side of the <laughs> yeah, family. Just going out on a limb. So they hug and he says, we got so much loving to do. I love this guy. I think he's sweet. I think that most of the people who are now in Gypsy's life Ken and Ryan, notwithstanding, are sweet. Yeah, Between I agree. Rod and Christy and Mia and Bobby, like she's got people who are trying to help her. I agree. I think we need a season two of this. I, I could watch this family do anything. I know. Let's watch them go to the grocery store. Yeah, I would watch Rod go to the grocery store and start explaining. You know what it is? Rod does a little bit of mansplaining to a lot. Like he explains <laughs> things. And so like he has that wise, that yes. wisdom. Mm. Mm, air to yes, him. there's a great deal of mm-hmm. wisdom in him. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So uh Gypsy's there to get a tattoo and she says, you know, I wanted to I wanted Bobby to do it because this is the tradition in my family. This is what mm-hmm. he does. And she gets a tattoo of a unilome. Yeah. That what it's called? And it's a oh, floor so. de floor de lee. Of course. These people well, are obsessed with the floor de lee. Floor de lee is everything in Louisiana. So but it's a, a multiple so the top has a floor de lee, which mm-hmm. it doesn't, I think, usually. Mm-hmm. But it's that like windy, you've seen it on yeah. many a tattoo or many yeah. a henna. T- I think I had that as a henna tattoo from the shore one time. Like, yeah, that's what we're doing here. Yep. Ooh, I'm going to the shore next week. Maybe I'll get a henna tattoo. I'm going to the shore next week too. I know you are. Well, are we going the same shore? No, you're going to Maryland. I'm going to, I'm going to Brocian City. Yeah. 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 No, we're going to somewhere in New Jersey just okay. for the day. All right. So uh, she's talking about this pick and poke that she has. Mm. And Bobby seems real familiar with the pick and poke. Yeah, he sure. describes exactly how it happens <laughs> in prison. And uh, she got a K for Ken. Now, here's a quick thing. I have a pick and poke. Excuse me? Yes. I carved a boy's initials into my ankle oh, when I was a- in seventh grade. A- yeah. So I didn't. I never colored it in, but I carved uh, it and I have the scar. Wow. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Wow, I have a piece of um, pencil lead in my arm mm. from when Tommy O'Leary shoved me against a, a locker in seventh grade. Oh, Tommy O'Leary. Okay. Tommy O'Leary, yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> my so you've read my book. Yes. So the character of Ollie, who is Jimmy's mm. best friend, his yes. initials are in my ankle. Got it. Yeah. Got yeah. it. All right. So uh, she's excited to have some agency over her body and to choose to get a tattoo. And guess what? Ryan can't have this be about her. No. Nope. He's got to get one now. Of course. Of course. This is. He mm. can't let her do a fucking thing. I can't stand this guy. Charlie is not the creeper that Ryan is. No, no. No. And everyone 201, when I posted the photo, said, wow, Charlie looks really nice and Ryan looks creepy. I'm like, thank you. And if you think I'm shitting all over Ryan, I promise you when we get into later episodes, I do have some empathy for him. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about it. But overall, he's a creeper. Yeah, he's a creeper. Okay. So uh, Rod is cooking in the garage for some reason. I don't know what this is. I don't know what is going on here, but I was trying to analyze this entire fucking thing. I think that's their outdoor kitchen. Oh, okay. That changes things. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just a random garage and they're eating at car tables in it. No, I think it's their outdoor kitchen, quote unquote. I, I thought maybe Christy didn't want everybody in the house getting her Hobby her word art decor. dirty. <laughs> her word art dirty. Or you know what I would do at Christie's house? I would walk around like Sprite and just start throwing things away. <laughs> it's a shit. What is this, this is shit? ugly. So, oh my god! Can we send Sprite to Rod and Christie's house? Oh, can you yes. imagine? That's the crossover we need. <laughs> I need Sprite to come to my house and read me for filth. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Rod is so happy that his girls, Gypsy Rose and Mia, are together in his home. Christy is in the house going through pictures. Did you get that one? I sure did, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she says Ken sent her many of them. Here we go. Mm. She tells the camera Gypsy Rose's fir Gypsy's, Gypsy's first true relationship was Ken. Mm -hmm. Not Ken. 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 Okay. And she says she believes Ken broke up with Gypsy because he couldn't take the heat of the media. And she says, I loved Ken. Mm -hmm. And we're still friends. And when my kids break up with somebody, I don't break up with them. Yeah. No, no. No, wrong answer. No, no. When your kids break up with somebody, especially if that person has done your child wrong, they're dead. They're done. Yeah, they're dead. Oh, God. They're completely okay. and totally dead. Like if they were, like you said, if they were married and they had kids and different whatever. Different situation. Different situation. But no. But there are so this. many photos of them with Ken in prison with Gypsy Rose. Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. they, he was there a lot, as were they. She says, I would know if she and Ken were, if she and Ken were together, mm -hmm. I would know in my heart she would be safe. Ryan's a great guy, but. Mm. These people are working real hard to convince themselves they like Ryan. Yeah, and it's not like working. Ryan. No. Also, he just told me the real reason this is Ken now. Mm -hmm. The real reason he ended it is because everyone was telling him, if you love her, Set let her, her go and find herself. I don't yeah. believe that. I don't believe that either. I don't believe that um, for two seconds. No, I think that's trying to make him look like a good guy. Yep. It's the right answer, which is why I don't believe it. Me either. Yeah. Mm -mm. So dad says, Ryan is easy to like. And he got is her he? through the last couple of years. Is he? I don't think so. I don't think so. Either. He's really easy to hate. Yeah. 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 I don't have a feeling of like for him. So, yeah. yeah. No. And I like most people. Yeah. No, actually, I mean, I maybe, maybe they, maybe they're looking at it like, I'm trying to think of how my dad would look at it. Like, he has a job. He has a he's, reputable job. You know, he's, he's a special education teacher. And clean cut. He's so, <clears throat> supporting my kid. Eh. As I'm in my bathtub last night. Right. I'm thinking this out because this is all that's on my mind. Okay. Sure. And I'm, I'm trying to think of, Ryan can't be that bad of a guy because he is a special education teacher. And that takes a real, a real good person to it do does. that kind of very special work. Okay. It does. Then I thought about tell them that you love me. And there mm. are some real creeps that work with people who are vulnerable. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. So you can't always let that fool you. See, I'm yeah. learning. I am learning and growing from covering reality TV. I'm really glad because we're going to keep you safe from yourself because yeah. Yeah. someday I may not be here to keep you safe from yourself. Because I would be like, there could be a creeper in a van. Like, come here. I lost my dog. Can you help me find the dog? Come get in my van. And you'll be like, okay. And I'm a special education teacher. I'd be like, oh, then you must be a good person. Okay, let me get in the van. Right, exactly. Yes. But now, yeah. now, now you know better. I would be like, oh, wait, there was that woman who took advantage of that of guy. Like, yeah. Okay. When, yeah. Amy, when we know better, we do better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting there, Amanda. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm growing. <laughs> so uh, 
Gypsy Rose and Ryan return home and they're having to, oh, Rob does say real quick that Gypsy Rose is spontaneous and Ryan is going to have his hands full. Because Rod she's knows. like 13 years old. Right. Rod understands. This is the thing I think I like about Rod so much. He's so emotionally intelligent. He is. He, he really is. is. Like for a man of his age, like of his time period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does seem to be very emotionally intelligent. He's and very like enlightened. He seems to get his kid. He seems to get the places where she's going to be fine. And yeah. the places where she's going to be, yep. uh, be acting a fool. Yes. So Gypsy Rose and Ryan return home. They have dinner in the garage. Rod says a blessing. Sure. Okay. We get a scene of Rod playing guitar. Oh, God. Okay. (sighs) Amanda. You okay over there? Do you need a moment? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, (laughs) Gypsy Rose. Thank God we didn't hear him singing. Thank God. Thank Mm -hmm. God. Would have sent you over the edge. So Gypsy Rose tells the camera she's analyzing her life and she just wants to be a good wife, a good friend, a good daughter, and she needs to learn to leave the baggage behind. Like, this is another thing. We're seeing her in real time trying to adjust to the world. Mm -hmm. And she's doing, like, I think she's saying all the right things and thinking about all the right things. I think her intentions are good. Me too. I think she wants to do the right thing. And we'll see it in the episodes coming up like the mere thought of getting in trouble with her probation officer sends her yeah. sobbing like and we all know what a dick bag mo could be mo and lou aren't great <laughs> they're assholes okay so ryan is now heading back to work now i don't know if you caught this gypsy rose spills coffee mm-hmm. she spills it onto a people magazine cover with her yeah. on it right no. Her instinct is to flip the coffee off of the magazine onto the carpet. I was like, girl. That only works if you're outside, girl, like on the grass or on concrete. Yeah. So now we got coffee on the carpet. Anyway, so Ryan's wrong. Baby, baby, it's okay, baby. It's okay, baby. Like him with this baby is constant. Stop. She spends the whole day while he's gone just purging a bunch of shit because, yeah. you know. So she FaceTimes with Christy and Ryan calls and she rejects it and he keeps calling. Did you notice that one? Then oh, yeah. Christy brings up Ken. Gypsy, Ken called. I'm going to say Ken forever now. That's, That's fine. It. I just okay. wish Christy would stop with the Ken shit. Me too. Me too. It's not doing Gyp- Gypsy any favors. He called to see how you were doing and he still loves you and he's single and he broke up with you for your own good. Come on! You can't stop it, Chris. Stop doing this. Rod is totally against this. Oh, yeah. Rod's like, would you just get your freaking nose out of this? Dude, this is not our place. No. Rod knows his place and knows where it's not his place. This is not his place. Yes. Gypsy Rose cries. And I just wrote, she is again being manipulated by a, a, a mother figure in her life. Mm-hmm. Gypsy Rose hangs up. She's spiraling and she's like, I need to stay committed to my marriage. Ryan gets home, not thrilled with the changes she's made in the house. He wants to know where the chicken is that he made last night. The rice. Right. So the next morning, Ryan says, Christy's continuing to keep the door open with Ken and I don't understand why. It's fair. Gypsy says, I told Ryan everything, including the fact that I'm having emotions about this Mm -hmm. and he's not happy. Ryan says, I'm going to get involved if this doesn't stop. And Ken, you don't want that. Let's remember, Ken, the D is fire. Okay. Uh, okay. I hate this guy. I, I, the D is fire needs to, I need to burn that saying. I mm-hmm. need to erase it from the human race. Mm-hmm. Particularly and, in reference to Ryan. So that's it. So let me ask you a question. Are you enjoying this as much as I am? I love this. And I love, I love watching you discover this world. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's I, like I need to stay in this world a while. It, it's like if you have a hobby you really love and then you are able to introduce a dear friend of yours to it mm-hmm, and they get lit mm-hmm, up by it. Mm-hmm. That's what this is for me. And your My ho- hobby is to and your hobby Gypsy is Rose. Gypsy Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Pottery or Gypsy Rose, uh, you know. You, you know. never know. Guys, thank you for joining us on this journey. We have had quite the response to Murder Club. People are I loving know. it. I'm so psyched. Yeah. I'm so psyched. Yeah. Next, we're definitely going to do the prison confessions one. Yeah, Let's keep definitely. this going. And we're going to do love after lockup. So people we, are getting a lot. 
We're going to be doing Love After Lockup. And I felt like there was some other murder thing we wanted to talk about, but I forgot. No, we want to do it. Going Clear. Oh, Going Clear. Yes. That's going to be that's going to be that's on culty. the $8 tier. Yeah, that's culty. So if you yeah. like murders, you're here. If you like cults, jump up a tier. And if yeah. you're if you're an old lady like us, jump up another tier. And no matter what, if you go up a tier, you get everything below it. So you're not yeah. losing Murder yeah. Club. No. You just gain Cult Club. You're right. I need help in branding. No, you don't. I think it's great. I love it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. You literally are keeping us going and and we we are so grateful. If you haven't already, if you want to be part of our Facebook community, it's called Backdoor Friends and the link is in the show notes. You can jump in there. You can read Amanda Substack too, where she writes about all things going on in her brain that we Mm. want to know about. And that link is also in the show notes. Do we? Mm. Sometimes. I do. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you all for listening to this free preview. If you'd like to hear the other episodes of Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup, you can join our $5 Patreon tier Will you, where you will hear Amanda and I discuss Mommy, Dead, and Dearest. And then we did episodes one and two and three of Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup. What you've just heard is episode four. Episodes five and six and seven are all on patreon six and seven will be like next week but five is there now so if you'd like to join us please go to patreon.com slash little miss recap and join our five dollar murder club tier where you get to hear us talk about gypsy rose thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next week